Well, we're talking about making a lasting deal. Do you want to start making a lasting deal? Do you want to go to arbitration and go to court every time you have a small problem? No. About the contract? No. No. So there are some people, they say, the words they don't want to hear is, that's not written in the contract. Right? We didn't write that in the contract. But the fact of the matter is, it's impossible to write every last detail in the contract. Okay? So we have to make, design the deal so that the other side can, the deal can last for a long time. Do you understand last? So, <coughs> sometimes people will try to get out of deals. Do you understand to get out of? So I was happy to make the deal now, first, but now I changed. I changed my attitude, I changed my idea, now I want to leave the deal. So the question is, what can you do to make your deal stick? Do you understand stick? It means that the other person can't get out easily. Okay? Can you design deals that adapt, change to the changing circumstances? These are the things we'll be talking about. So, question, what can you make, do to make sure that people carry out their side of the agreement? So I'll discuss with your partner. We already discussed some kind of things in class, so you may have an idea. So what can you do to make sure that people carry out their side of the agreement? So discuss with your partner. Of course we have a contract, it's written down, but we don't want to go to court, and we don't want to go to arbitration. Maybe the people change their mind later. Right? So what can we do at the start? to make sure that people carry out their side of the agreement. change their behavior, maybe they want to renegotiate the deal, maybe they want to leave the deal. If they want to leave the deal, it's bad news for you, because even if it's written in the contract, you still need to go to court. Do you want to go to court? No. Do you want to pay the money for the lawyers, and in the end you might not win, or you might win, and it takes a lot of time? No. So here's the question is that, what can you do at the start of the agreement? So let's say that just one example, you want to buy a dog, and your parents don't want you to have a dog, right? But they make a deal with you. I'll buy the dog if you do the salgoji <laughs> five times a week, right? Then you, they buy the dog, and then you don't do the salgoji. <laughs> what are your parents going to do? Nothing, right? They already got the dog. Are they going to shoot the dog? <laughs> Maybe they like the dog now. Are they going to sell the dog? No. No. So what can you do to make sure that people carry out their side of the agreement? Right? Just generally. Also in business. What could your parents do beforehand? Or what kind of things can we do? So, 
reason I ask this kind of question, maybe you're not sure of the answer, or if you get the answer wrong, it's okay. But the reason is to make you think, right? Why? Because that's like active learning. If you have to think about that, then you remember better. Okay? If I just tell you that and then the answer, maybe you don't think about it and you just pass over and don't think about it deeply and you don't remember, right? But if I ask the question first and you have to think about it and then you see the answer, then you pay more attention to the answer and you remember more, okay? But it's a different culture of learning between Asia and the Western culture. In the Western cul Asian culture, people don't like to lose space, right? So you don't like that I ask you a question and you don't know the answer because you lose space. Do you understand to lose space? Right? You are embarrassed in front of the other people. You didn't know the answer. But in Western culture, we don't have that, right? We have a different way that people guess and try, and it's all, they, they fail, then there's no problem, okay? The other people don't mind either, okay? So just in this, generally, in this class, the setup of the class, I want to give you the experience of studying in the UK or Ireland, okay? So I want to make the class like UK or Ireland way, not Korean way, okay? So a slightly different way. Okay, so don't, the point is don't worry if I ask you a question and you don't know the answer, okay? So, <coughs> Yi Sung Ho, what do you think? What the condition. Make the condition, right? Anything else? What if you make the condition but they don't keep the condition? Like, your mother says you need to do the Solgo G, but after? You change your mind, you don't want to do the Salgo G. You try doing the Salgo G, but it's really not nice, it's dirty and you don't like it. So you change your mind. You thought you could do it, but now you don't want to do it. Kimchi, especially kimchi, is very hard to clean. <laughs> right? People can change, right? Change their idea or change their mind. So what can you do then beforehand? Does anybody have any idea? Okay, you can make a penalty, right? If you don't do that, you need to pay me money, okay, or that kind of thing, right? Anything else? They're going to lose their reputation. With who? What if it's you and your mother? Is she going to tell all your aunts? <laughs> lose your <reputation? laughs> hmm? So, just the relationship, right? That's one thing. So, we can make a, a good relationship with the other person. If you have a good relationship with the other person, it should help, right? But maybe like what you're trying to say here. If you're good friends, they don't want to break up the friendship, right? Or make a bad relationship. Do you want to make a bad relationship with your mother? So maybe you have a strong relationship with your mother, so you might decide to do the solidology, right? Another thing is make a fairness. Don't make the unfair deal. If you make the unfair deal with people, we talked about that before, maybe they're not going to carry out the deal because it's unfair. They think it's unfair, later they don't they don't do what they're supposed to do. Okay? Uh, so we can also make just positive, try to be positive uh, with the other people. Okay? Uh, so use a positive language and take a positive approach to the other side. Then they can like us more. Okay? So maybe if we decide to do a penalty, is that a positive way of dealing with the other side? Negative. Negative way. It might work too, but we can try to be very positive with the other side. Okay. So let's have a look at some example. So in 1969, Ford, Mazda and Nissan made an agreement. 50% Ford, 25% Mazda, 25% Nissan. Do you know these companies? Yes. What do they make? So they agreed to manufacture automatic transmissions, just some part of the car. Do you, in Korea, use automatic transmission? 
in our, our, the UK they usually use manual. Okay. So as the shared experience and trust grew, because they kept having regular meetings of their team, this meant they could be this agreement was a platform, platform in the train station for developing a host of other opportunities. So they got to know each other. This is the relationships, right? They made a good relationship on this deal. So because they made a good relationship on this deal, they start to make a lot of other deals. Okay? Then what happens when we had a bad time? Mazda had a crisis in the mid-1990s. So Mazda's principal creditor, creditor means the person who lent them money, forward, they bought Mazda. Okay? Purchased a controlling stake means they bought their company. Okay? So the Ford executive was named president of a 19 billion Japanese company. So we can see this result of, of the good relationships. When things changed, we had a good relationship with the person we made the negotiation and contract with. They helped us. So when Mazda had a bad time, instead of going bankrupt, okay, Ford stepped in and helped them. They bought the company and kept all the jobs and kept the company running. Okay. So this is an example of relationships, making a good relationship with the other side. Do you have any question about that one? Right. If we make a good relationship like that with the people, then they're more likely to carry out their side of the agreement. Okay. And on top of carrying out their side of the agreement, we can make more agreements in the future. So Mazda and Ford made more agreements. And then if we're in trouble, they might even help us if the relationship is very strong. Okay? So this is one way, make a good relationship. <coughs> then uh, we are going to talk about the uh, different factors here. So. We're going to talk firstly about how to deal with predictable change. So we have different ways. Do you understand anticipate? What does anticipate mean? Hmm? We expect or forecast something to happen. Okay. So uh, if I throw the pen at you, I anticipate you're going to catch the pen. Right. I expect you're going to catch the pain. Okay? <laughs> didn't happen. Right? But this is what anticipate means. Okay, so uh, we can anticipate a buyout. Do you understand buyout? What does buyout mean? Huh? Yeah, so Mazda and Nissan was a buyout. Okay? I own 20% of the company. Nissan owns 20%, another person owns 20%. I buy the other person's part and I own the company. Okay? Exit, leaving, leaving the contract, leaving the deal. Anticipate the change in attitude. So we can try and forecast that people might change their idea or change their attitude. Anticipate some shock from the outside. Multiplex agreements means uh, Try to lock in the agreement by adding more parties or adding more issues and make the insecure contract secure. So we'll talk about each of these things. So the first one is anticipate the buyout or exit. So actually there's no better time than the start of the relationship when the goodwill and optimism is a very high level to talk about the other end of the relationship. So we can think about the Hollywood marriage. These days, it's very rare for the Hollywood star to get married without a prenuptial agreement. Do you understand prenuptial agreement? It's called prenup for short. Nuptial is wedding, pre-wedding agreement. Okay. So, if Tom Cruise gets married to some young woman who is just 22, right? Or Cameron Diaz, you know Cameron Diaz. She gets married to some young guy. He's just 25. <coughs> Are they just going to be, at the start of the relationship, they're really happy together? 
is Cameron Diaz going to say, let's get married with no agreement about financial or economic things? Or Tom Cruise will say, let's just get married. Right? No agreement about the financial things in case of divorce. What do you think? If you're Cameron Diaz, and you're 45, and you have a young lover, he's just 25, right? Maybe famous singer, right? He's only dating you because he wants the publicity for his new album, right? But he wants to get married. He thinks, great, if I get married, I'll be in the news. And then guess what? I get divorced, I'll get lots of money from Cameron Diaz. So what are you going to do? Just get married? No, what are you going to do? What are you going to say in the contract? If we divorce, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to give you my belief. Well, you don't love me. <laughs> if you love me, you trust me. So why do you want to make that agreement? <laughs> Trust me, we've been together for one year. If you don't trust me, then let's break up. Okay? Anyway, I only wanted to get married for your money. You're 45, I'm 25, what did you think? <laughs> you caught me, you were right, well done. I'm going to find another old lady. <laughs> I hope Cameron Diaz doesn't watch the video, but I don't think so. She's not that old. So, before we get married, we make a prenup. So it's the same for the business, okay? We make, at the start of the relationship, we feel happy. We have a lot of goodwill. Do you understand goodwill? Good relationship with the other side. So this is the best time to talk about the bad, what can happen in the worst case, okay? So, we should try to anticip anticipate what we know could be coming. We, we could, if we are making an agreement to join together, we could end up breaking up in the future, right? If we are a joint venture, how many percent of joint ventures fail, right? Maybe the same percent as marriages, right? So it could break up. Uh, also, if the private equity or venture capital firm is buying part of my company, I'm an entrepreneur, and they're buying part of my company, then they might want to leave after one or two years. They just want to make a quick profit, right? So we have to think about those things. So no private equity or venture capital firm, private equity means just rich people, right? Or venture capital firm would invest in, a, in your company. Let's say you have an idea. Nobody is going to give you the money unless they make very clear exit expectations, okay, when agreed milestones are met. So that if I'm a very rich person and I want to invest in your company, I'm going to make a 150 page contract, okay, and it's going to be very clear about what you have to do and if the agreement breaks up what's going to happen. Okay? If I don't do that, I'm not protecting my investment. So they will make some sophisticated exit provisions, like mediation and arbitration provision. So it will say in the contract, if we have a problem, it should go to mediation, it should go to arbitration. Okay? Allocation of shared assets, like customer relationships and intellectual property. So I'm an investor, and I invest in your company. So I get access to your intellectual property. You have an idea, right? So then how about I just buy part of your company, right? Then I find out about your intellectual property, then I finish the agreement, then make my own company with your intellectual property. Would you be happy? Hmm? No, so we have to make an agreement, you have to put in the contract about your intellectual property. If we break up after one month, after six months, after one year, you get to keep your intellectual property, okay? Just you, because that's the I'm giving you the money, and you're giving me your intellectual property. Okay? So if I, I could try to be very clever, I just want your intellectual property, I don't want you. 
Okay, so I, inv I invest in your company, then I make some excuse to buy out your company, and then I fire you. You're gone out of the company. Okay, do you understand? So, or I break up, we break the agreement, right? And then I keep the intellectual property. So we need to make those things. Or you have some good customer relationships. You have a network. Okay, so I just use you for your network. Then I get your customers. I get to know your customers. Do I need you anymore? No. So let's break up, right? So you have to make put this in at the start. Timetables for the buyout. So it means that after a certain time, I can buy the rest of the company if I want. And valuation. How are we going to value the company? Different people have different ways of valuing the company. If one person wants to buy the company from another one. So let's look at examples of, of uh, change. Next one is a change in attitude. Okay. So the founders and financial backers of new ventures typically anticipate a period of cooperation. So I invest in your company. At the start we're going to cooperate to grow the firm and make it more value. Okay, we're on the same team. But over time things can change. I'm the investor. So I want an IPO or a sale. Do you understand IPO? Yes. So do you know Facebook? Yes. Do you know Bono? Bono is a famous singer from the group U2. Uh -huh. No, you don't know U2? Our, our famous band from Ireland. <laughs> So Bono was one of the equity investors in Facebook. He was very rich. So Bono gave the money to Mark Zuckerberg, right? So at the start, they are cooperating. Bono is helping Mark Zuckerberg with his network. So Bono and all the pop stars are using Facebook. Uh, then Mark Zuckerberg gets an advantage, right? And Bono is also investing in the company. So they're cooperating. But then, after two or three years, Facebook is doing very well. Bono now wants an IPO. He wants Facebook to be sold to the public. When Facebook was sold to the public, the stock price was $40 a share. Now the stock price is $100 a share. Just two years it went up. Right? First it went down and then it went up. So Bono wants to sell all his shares at this amount of money. So let's say that Bono, he invested $1 million. Probably, let's say he invested $10 million in Facebook. Okay? Let's say he got 50% of the company. Okay? Now at the IPO, Facebook is worth, let's say, 5 billion. Okay? Bono is now going to get 2.5 billion for the 10 million he invested. Okay? So this is the game of equity investors. They invest in a lot of small companies, and then just one of them hits big. So they want to get so Bono needs to get this money. Otherwise, he, he's lost a lot of money on other ventures that he invested in. Okay? So Bono wants this. He wants to sell Facebook stock and get his money back. Okay? What about Mark Zuckerberg? He wants to make long-term investments in Facebook. He wants a Facebook to be a successful over the long term. Okay? So at this point we have different attitude. Bono wants just quick investments which just add to the value of the company. So he can get the higher price at the IPO. Okay? But Mark Zuckerberg wants to invest the money for the long term. So that Facebook is better in five years, in ten years. Okay? But Bono is not worried about five years and ten years. He's just worried about next year. Right? Do you understand? He's selling his stake next year. So that's often the case. The, venture, the equity investor or venture capitalist, they want to get in and then get out when the price is high in the short term. So, uh, <coughs> we have that kind of situation. So, let's have a look at an example. Um, we can ask a question about the example. So, do you understand pediatrician? Pediatrician is a doctor for children. Okay? So, a group of prominent doctors, they wanted uh, money to make some CDs about parenting. Okay, so the doctors want to make a CD that parents will buy, which teaches them how to look after their child. Okay? Is that a good idea? What do you think? Can they make money? Are you going to invest in their company? 
If you're rich, if you're Bono, <laughs> they send you a letter. Right? We're going to make CDs. Right? Let's just say that Bono is the venture investor, right? So Bono says, oh yes, I made a lot of money in Facebook, so I can invest in this company. Okay? So the venture investor provides capital in return for a substantial interest. So the venture investor gets 90% of the company. Okay? And the doctors just have 10% of the company. So the investor invests 18 million and the doctors invest 2 million, for example. Okay? So the investor has this much of the company, the doctors have this much of the company. Okay? Uh, so the investor helps the doctors to create the CD, writes a business plan, makes the, because the doctors don't know about business, right? And makes the marketing. And because it's Bono, he can get the attention of the key people at the big software houses, right? So uh, some of these venture capitalists, they have good network. So he, he asks the publisher, he gives the CD to his publisher, music publisher, and he says, oh look, this is a good idea, right? So, some of the publishers are interested. They're interested. They say, okay, Bono, that looks like a good idea. I'm interested, okay? Then suddenly, the doctors change their, their attitude towards Bono, okay? They say, Bono, you own too much of the company. You own 90% of the company. Okay, we own just 10% of the company, okay? Our, it was our idea, not your idea. <laughs> Okay? And it's our reputation that as doctors that we're using. Okay? So they tell him, you have to reduce you have to give us more of the company now. Okay? Or else we're going to stop. We're not going to do continue. Or we're not going to do a good job on the seedings. So the company was stopped and the doctors were also blocked from from developing their idea elsewhere because Bono has a lot of friends. Okay? So when the doctor stopped for Bono, Bono also said to the publishers, actually, don't help these guys. Right? I don't like them anymore. Don't help them anymore. Okay? So, this, we could have predicted this, because what Bono's, Bono had done all his work, right? The company doesn't need Bono anymore. What did they need Bono for? Writing the business plan and introducing them to the publishing company. Okay? They just needed the investor for that. So his risk was sunk. Do you understand sunk? Sunk means it's under the water. It's gone. Okay? So the investor's part is already done. The company has its first success. They have a publishing place which is interested. So they don't really need him anymore. Do you understand? So the doctors see him as less critical. He's not so important now. So what could the investor have done at the start? to have guarded against this predictable change of attitude by the doctors. So discuss with your partner. Do you understand the problem for the investor? Yes. They already did the, their things, and now the doctors don't need them anymore. Okay? So the doctors change their attitude towards the investor. Okay? They, want their, they want the investor to give them more of the company. So what could the investor have done at the start? To stop this, probably the investor could predict, they could predict that the doctors are going to change their attitude after they got, after they don't need them anymore. So what, what can they do? So think about it and discuss with your partner, you're the investor. Doctors are quite smart, right? So you have to be careful, even to deal with the doctors.
Did you ever watch the movie Blow with Johnny Depp? Blow with Johnny Depp. Blow. Do you know the movie Blow with Johnny Depp? It's about uh, the drug problem in the U.S. There was some U.S. guy who took all the drugs from Colombia to the U.S. Right? So he went to Colombia. He met the drug dealer from Colombia. And he helped the drug dealer from Colombia to sell the drugs in the U.S. Right? But guess what happened? As soon as he introduced the drug dealer to the U.S. contact, they were partners. Guess what the drug dealer did? Colombian drug dealer. He cut out the middleman, right? He didn't need him anymore. So he broke the agreement. Anyway, drugs is illegal. So the guy just lost his place and lost all his money, right? So once he introduced the Colombian drug lord to the American contact, Colombian drug person said, I don't need you anymore. You're not a partner anymore. You're out of my business, right? So same kind of problem here. So what can you do to avoid that kind of problem? You're not needed anymore. You did your thing. You're not. I don't need you in this company anymore. You're not so important. How can we make the contract so that we can or make the situation? That's what happened, right? When the doctors didn't uh, agree, they wanted him to give up some of the company. That's what happened. He told the publishers, he was there, knew the publishers, he said, don't deal with the doctors, right? So it was lose lose. So, how can we avoid that? Can anybody think? Anybody have any idea? Yes? developing the CD because that's our skill, that's our idea. Right? So what are you, how can you I don't think that one is going to be relevant. Right? So we're talking about dealing with that kind of problem, right? So at the start we'll talk about later about making a social contract. In the next class we'll talk about a social contract. Okay? So what we're going to do is clarify the party's mutual expectations about what would happen if the venture was successful and change the economics if necessary. Okay? So social contract means that we're working on trust with the other people on relationship and we're going to talk to them about this situation right first. So clarify with them. If I find the publisher very quickly and easily, right? are you going to be okay with that? Are you going to be okay that with this structure of the company? Okay? And then they're going to say yes. Then we can change the contract a little bit. Find some way to change the contract. Okay? To reflect that. So first we have the discussion with them about the future. And about this probable thing that can happen. 
Okay? That's clear, right? You're going to say to them, well, I'm not going to be that important to you. After I introduce you to the publishers, I'm not going to be that important. And they might agree, they might say, yes, you won't be that important. But anyway, we value you, and we are going to keep you at the same percentage of the company. Okay? Then first of all, they give their word. We talked about that, right? And then when they say that, you, it's an opportunity for you to say, okay, then we can change the contract a little bit, like put into the contract that there is no buyout by the doctors until two years, three years, four years, okay? So then can they say no? They just said, they just discussed that they think you're going to be very important all the time. So they can't really say no, okay? And then when this happens, you already talked about that, so the doctors would be very dishonest if they went back and changed their word, right? So you just have to be clear about those things. We are saying that this is predictable. We are trying to anticipate the change in attitude, okay? So if you watch the movie Blow, it's a movie with Johnny Depp, right? So it's a famous movie. You can get on your OLA TV, right? <laughs> You'll, maybe you'll think the guy was really silly, right? He w did all the dangerous thing like meeting the drug person and taking the drug to the US, introducing to the US contact, right? And then why, why do they need him? The US contact doesn't need him, the Colombian guy doesn't need him. Just They just do business themselves and don't need him anymore, right? So, was he quite silly? Should he have anticipated this change in attitude? He thought the Colombian guy was his friend. They're partners, they have parted together, 50-50. But should he have anticipated the change in attitude or not? No. You think he shouldn't have anticipated? He couldn't expect that? That's a complete surprise, 100% surprise? Or not 100% surprise? You think not 100% surprise? Right, that's the point, right? We have to try to anticipate, you understand anticipate? that people can change their attitude, right? He could have said, well, they won't need me, so why would they pay me millions of dollars every year if they don't need me? Maybe they'll change their mind. Even though we're friends, maybe they'll change their mind, okay? So we have to anticipate that people can change their attitude, okay? So, <laughs> let's look at another example. So again, we're looking at the... Uh, Entrepreneurship example. Do you want to be an entrepreneur? Do you want to start your own company? Quite e in the US it's easier than other countries. In the US they have this system of the venture capitalist okay, and investors who meet with the people who has an idea and they make an agreement, right? They buy 90% of their company or 50% and they go into business together, right? So, a prospective investor approached by a commercial banker who financed independent filmmakers uh, was approached, should I say here. Do you understand independent filmmakers? Filmmaker making movies. Okay, it's quite risky business. So, the banker, the guy worked in the bank and he, he was giving loans. Financing means giving loans to filmmakers, people who are making movies. Okay? He was doing very well. Okay? The bank was making a big profit. So what happened? He wants to leave the bank and start his own company. So most people, when they start their own company, they already work in the industry for five years, for ten years. They, right? they have some network or contacts which helps them to start their own company. So he knows the networks, he knows the contacts. He wants to leave the bank and start his own company. So he approached an investor and asked the investor, can you give me 18 million? Okay? Let's say it's Bono. Bono, can you give me 18 million? Bono said, yes, I made 2.5 billion on Facebook, I can give you 18 million. Right? He wants to make the new company and he's going to put in 2 million. So again, 90% of the investor, 10% of the entrepreneur. Okay? So the investor, Bono analyzed the investment and he thinks, I'm going to make a 100% return every year. Is that a high return? Yes. Yes, because this is risky. Making movies is risky, right? Independent movies is risky. 
So, but the investor turned down this offer. What? Why? He thought it was unfair. It was too good for him. 100% a year, right? He made a new deal, one that was better for the banker, entrepreneur, and less for himself. The investor thought that within two or three years, the entrepreneur would be looking for a better deal. So he said, this deal is too good for me. So what's going to happen is that guy is going to leave after two years and find another investor or another person. I want to be in this one for the long term, not just for one or two years. So he made a different type of deal. The banker was given the right to buy back some of the investor's equity at a low price. So just like the doctors wanted to do, right? They wanted to get back some of their company. So he's writing the option here. You can buy back some of the company at a low price. Okay? After what? After I get my profit of five million. So after I get a profit of five million, you can buy my stock from me at a low price. Do you understand that option? Okay? Uh, then it continues. After I make another five million, you can buy back more of the com your company. Okay? And so on and so on. So the reason is this good for the investor? Yes, this is only after I make a profit of five million. After I make a profit of five million. So I'm making profits here. Okay? Five million is just 30%, but I'm happy with 30% return. Okay? So after I, and then that's a good in incentive for the entrepreneur to make a big profit. Okay? The problem for the entrepreneur was he was making a big profit for the bank, but he wasn't getting any advantage. Right? He's just working for the bank. Maybe he gets a small bonus. That's why he wants to start his own company. So if I'm the investor and I'm still taking 90% of the profit and he's getting just 10% of the profit, he's not going to be happy with me either. Okay? So I'm going to make this agreement where he can buy back his company slowly after I make my profit. So that is anticipating the change in attitude. So that would be...